Well, good morning, and welcome to another episode of our Aquarium Online Academy. My name is James, and we're here in the Education Department at the Aquarium of the Pacific in Long Beach. I have Sarah and Talia helping me out today. Talia is controlling all the magic of the internet behind me, and Sarah is on question control over at the computer. So if you have questions during our program today, we invite you to participate. You can text us questions at 562-286-1838. You can also email us questions. So if your questions are really big questions that we don't get to, or what if you're not watching live Monday at 10 a.m.? You can still ask us questions about your program. So live at lbaop.org, you can still ask us questions, and our educators will help answer them for you. Well, our topic today is going to be a good one. Did you see what it was? Do you know anything about the octopus? Well, what should we talk about with the octopus? Hmm. Have you heard any fun stories about these beautiful animals? They are kind of mischievous. They do like to hide in weird spaces of the exhibit. Make our caretakers really have to search for them sometimes. Hmm. But what other fun things do octopus do? Let's think. Maybe we can pull up a video of one of our octopus moving around, and we can make some observations together. We are all scientists. Even if you're not watching our program, you do behave like a scientist. You observe things, you ask questions, and you try to find the answers to those questions. So while we make observations together, those questions you might have you can share them with each other. You can share them on the text line for Sarah to bring them in to us. Or maybe you can also look them up yourself to help answer those questions. So let's do some exploration of the octopus. Uh, Having an animal that can shoot from a window is, a window nice. is better. Oh, no. Yeah, see, the problem is the iPhone, it's, oh, that's really nice. are a special kind of animal. Their bodies aren't in the same design as ours. Our bodies, we are set for walking on land. We have bones to help us run around. But let's look at an octopus really quick. I got a stuffed animal friend we can look at. Does this octopus look like it's gonna be running around on land a lot? Climbing fences? Not so much. Their bodies are in a different design than ours. Looks like they have a giant head, don't they? Lots of big brain in there, right? Well, turns out their bodies are same but different as ours. All of their, what you might call like guts, like their stomach, their intestines, their heart, is in a specific spot, but it's not tucked away tiny right here. It's all of this space that looks like their head. When you stretch them out, their head is only this section in the middle. This part is like their tummy, and this part has their arms on it. So what we might call their tummy is called the mantle. The mantle has all of the body parts that we think of that would be on the inside. Their brain is right here in the very middle, right between their eyes. So their bodies are kind of designed like ours, but if you wanted to be an octopus, I don't say you do this because it's kind of difficult but you'd have to take your arms and legs off and glue them to your face right here right there that's how an octopus works their mouth is in the middle of all of their arms now i'm saying arms instead of tentacles let's go to a picture of an octopus real quick or we can take a look at this one their tentacles we commonly call they have eight of them but in the world of octopus and their cousins there's tentacles and arms arms have suction cups all down the length whereas tentacles only have suction cups at the very end like a squid now we know what you mean when you say the tentacles of an octopus but there's a little bit different way that we can describe them so that we include all the cephalopods all the animals like octopus and their cousins so it's all kind of the same language who else is related to an octopus and a squid hmm. One of my favorite animals in the whole world are the cuttlefish. Cuttlefish are very special, just like this one. This is actually one of the giant cuttlefish. 
They're not quite as big as the picture, but they are pretty big. They're about this big. Giant cuttlefish are really beautiful to watch. They have the same body shape. See? You have arms, tentacles, head, and then, do you remember this part? We call it the mantle. It has all of their guts, you might say, on the inside. Now, their little more interesting cousin is the chambered nautilus. Now, all the nautiloids, or the animals like a nautilus, have chambers. This one just, they named it the chambered nautilus because they can. That's how they do things. They have these little chambers inside their shell that allow them to work like a living submarine. They can dive really deep in the ocean or surface because they can fill these chambers with water. What else did we notice about the Nautilus? Check that out. They have all of these appendages, tentacles and arms up in the front. Their head and their eyes are in the middle. But this is special to the Nautilus. What is this? Hmm. Well, if you had to hide in a shell, the end of the shell is still open. So how do you protect yourself if you're hiding in your shell? This is their hood. It's kind of like a trap door to help close out on the end of the shell if they need to hide inside. Now, the Nautilus, does it look like they're going to move around like an octopus will? Hmm. Let's see if we can take a look at another octopus video and watch how octopus move because their movement is very different from some of their cousins. The Nautilus, the... I just lost her name. Well, it's a squid. <laughs> and their other cousins have a very different way of movement. Let's take a look at our octopus again. How is the octopus moving? Are they swimming? Are they crawling? Hmm. What are those? Ooh, those are their suction cups on their arms. Now, we're looking at, I believe this is Godzilla, one of our previous giant Pacific octopuses we had on exhibit. And we can see, right here is their head with their brain inside. This little opening is called part of their siphon. So what they can do is breathe with their abdomen. Seems kind of weird. But remember, their gills are in the mantle, this wrinkly part that looks like the back of their head. Their back of, head, back of their head is very weird. But remember, it's not their head. This is like their tummy. So their gills are up here, and they have to suck water into there so they can get fresh water to get to that oxygen, and they squirt the water out that they're not using, and it squirts out of that little opening. And the cool thing about octopus is the siphon, which helps propel them backwards, they can actually rotate and move around. On a squid, it's stuck in place. All right, well. That's a pretty good review of what some of the basic things octopus have on their body. But let's take a look at some of the abilities of octopus. What is the very famous ability that octopus has? Hmm. They are really good at hiding. They're also really good at eating, but that's partially because of their ability to hide. So when they hide, are they playing a good game of hide and seek and they're counting? Or what are they doing? Octopus have the ability to change the color of their skin. Actually, very quickly, too. Their skin is covered with special cells that can help change what we see. They can also change the texture of their skin. So let's watch as we try to see what this octopus can do to camouflage. There's that siphon moving around that it can breathe with. Oh my gosh, did you just see that? What happened to their skin? That's so cool. Their bodies can not only change color, but change texture. We can watch it again. What if you could change the texture of your skin just like that? How good would you be at hide and seek? Uh, pretty, pretty good. I have known people that when we were snorkeling have been surprised by an octopus because they reached and grabbed onto something to steady themselves didn't realize an octopus was nearby, and it scared the bejesus out of them. And then they tried to grab me because they were, you know, they inhaled some water, and so then we're all struggling because an octopus was so good at hiding, it scared one of our snorkelers. Well, you can even see on this 
last frame of the picture, their skin is not the same as when it first started. So normally, if they're not trying to hide, their skin is very smooth. Actually, if you ever get a chance to touch an octopus, it's kind of a weird texture. It moves a lot. Their skin can move a little bit more across their body than ours does. But they can change the texture of their skin, which is part of that reason why it can move so much. Now, our skin changes a little bit of texture. What if you were in the bathtub for too long? What happens to your hands? They get wrinkly. Now, for us, that helps us to be able to grab things because we're not an aquatic animal. We like to play in the water. But if we're in the water too long, our bodies just are like, I don't know what to do anymore. So our fingers and our toes get wrinkly to help us be able to grip something. Well, that's just a very small amount of change. An octopus can completely change the texture of their skin to look like rocks, coral, or seaweed. Now, there's one really cool octopus we don't unfortunately have any pictures of called the mimic octopus that tries to copy all the other animals that it lives near. And it can change this color and texture and movement of its body so they can copy those other animals. That's a pretty cool ability to hide. Now, hiding's good if you're trying to not be found. But what if you're trying to catch food? How does hiding help you catch food? That's interesting. Now, we have a video of Godzilla eating from one of our enrichment devices. It's called a boat. <laughs> we have a little toy boat we can put into the water that we use to help teach the octopus how to find food, but also to give it puzzles to, to solve while it's on the exhibit. So we'll show you how an octopus can find its food behind the scenes. So here's Godzilla. And what we're going to do, well, not me personally, but one of our staff is going to put some food on a little toy boat in the water. So this has a whole crab in it that's been thawed out. So it's not a live crab, otherwise the crab might crawl away. Now look how Godzilla is behaving as it realizes, are you giving me food? Is this a snack for later? And we also will put some, uh, like we'll rub the crab or clam, whatever we're feeding, on the surfaces of the thing that we've put the animal in or the, the food item in so that an octopus can smell it. So if you had to try and find your food, you could just use your eyes to look for food, but it gets pretty dark in the ocean. It might be tough to actually find your food with just your eyes. So your other senses are going to help out. Well, Godzilla has become very brave to try and take a look at this toy boat. Mmm. Does this taste like a snack? Now, the cool thing about octopus that you can actually watch as Godzilla is grabbing this boat, each suction cup they can use, like each of one of our fingers, we can bend and move around independently of the others. And there goes the boat. But don't worry, octopus don't like to eat boats. Just the crabs that hang out inside the boats. But it pulled that boat underneath where all the arms come together and the mouth is inside that space. All the arms neat and their mouth is under here. Whoop, there comes that boat. Yeah. All right, let's go back into the studio because we had a couple questions come in about animals that are eating. When an octopus and cuttlefish and nautilus are eating, what are they going to be eating? That's a pretty good question. It kind of comes down to the species and where they live. So all of the cephalopods, all of the cuttlefish, squid, octopus, nautilus, kind of depends on where they are and their habitat. If you're a deep sea octopus, you probably eat some of the same things as a tropical reef octopus. What was Godzilla trying to get to in that boat? A crab. They have a very powerful beak. Actually, all of the cephalopods have a very powerful beak to break open things with shells. They might be able to catch a fish. But chances are they're going to be eating stuff that's a little bit slower moving. So an octopus is more likely to eat things like arthropods, like crabs and shrimp, and maybe a, a small lobster or something. But they can eat clams and mussels and other creepy crawlies on the ground. Now, a nautilus is a little different. A nautilus has to move up and down the water column. So they like to be in the dark. They're deep in the water, two to 3,000 feet down during the daytime. And when it's night, then they come up to the surface to feed. So they are an open water animal. They're not eating stuff off the ground like an octopus would. They're going to be looking for things that are swimming around. A cuttlefish 
has a very similar diet to an octopus because of where they live. Now, we might have a video of a cuttlefish grabbing some food. We can actually watch how they do this. Say hello to, or okay, say goodbye to Mr. Plankton. What did that cuttlefish do? Check out these tentacles. Yep. So that's not specifically its mouth parts. I don't know if this crab is going to have a good day or a bad day. He's figured out what the story is going to be. But the cuttlefish will use colorful displays to try and confuse their prey. And the shorter arms help hold the food in their, towards their mouth so they can eat it. But the longer tentacles snap out really fast and grab their food. So crabs, little shrimp, other crustaceans and other things that have shells are pretty common items for cuttlefish, squid, and octopus to all eat. But again, it really depends on what species you are and where you live. If you're a vampire squid, you're probably not going to eat little tiny shrimp. They also don't really tend to live in the same spots that you live in. So it really depends on where you are. But things with shells are a common food item. But how are they getting that food out of the shell? I'm glad you asked. I found our model of a jaw. Now this is the model of a squid beak, but it's very similar to an octopus beak. Let's go take a look at it under the camera. All right, we have a special document camera, not just for looking at hands, but there's my hand. This beak is very, very strong inside a squid or octopus mouth. Now, because it's not flat, I'm gonna have to hold it so it kind of looks like it's flat on the, on the surface. Let's zoom in some too. While we are watching it, can you see where people got the idea to call it a beak? It looks very similar to a parrot beak, doesn't it? The curve of both of the top and bottom side of the jaw allow them to puncture into their food, just like we have pointed teeth to puncture into our food so we can take a bite out of it. Now, if you're a squid like a Humboldt squid, which is more like what this jaw came from, a Humboldt squid is about the size of a person, about my size, but their mouth is only this big. The largest of the giant Pacific octopuses would have a mouth this big too. So if you're an octopus and you're only this big, your mouth is very small. Then that's the biggest space that you can fit through if you're an octopus. Octopus don't have bones. So they can squeeze through whatever space their beak can fit through. So if you're a 100 pound giant Pacific octopus, like even a bigger version of our Godzilla, this would be about the size of space that you could squeeze through. Which is why some octopus have actually gotten out of their exhibit spaces and snuck away. That does happen every once in a while, but we do try to do everything we can to not let them sneak out. So when our exhibit has a big octopus in it, like Godzilla, we actually put surfaces around the edge that they don't like to touch. Is there anything that you don't like to touch because it just feels weird to you? Yeah? What about really sticky tape? Sometimes it's fun to play with, but it's like, I don't need this right now. Well, for an octopus, it's the fake grass, the astroturf stuff. They don't like to touch that. So we can put that around the edges of their exhibit on the top half so they don't crawl out. We can also put little fences up there. We can also put lids on there with a lock so they don't really take the lid off and come out. Octopus are very smart. So we saw Godzilla take care of that boat. We saw that cuttlefish tease and confuse their prey so that they're like, I don't know what's going to happen. The light show happened and, and then I was food. So they're intelligent enough that they can try to get out, but there's things that we can do that they just don't like to mess with so they don't get out of their exhibit space. Now for Godzilla, when you're a really big octopus, you don't really have the ability to crawl away because you're too big. Could you imagine being too big that you can't crawl away? Well, if you're an aquatic animal, that's a little more common. There's really big animals in the ocean that just can't crawl anywhere. Let's take a look at a really big octopus hiding in our oceans. And we can see how they behave around people. So normally octopus will hang out in little nooks and crannies, crevices and corners. And if they get found, they'll swim away. 
Now, while I was swimming, did you notice that little siphon pumping? Let's watch it again. Because movement is very important to how animals do all the things they do. There it goes. That siphon is the opening for the water to pump out of its body. So if you were an octopus or a squid and you wanted to shoot backwards, you pump all that water that was in the mantle out the little siphon and you can rock it backwards. Their cousins, the Nautilus, don't do this as well. They do a little bit more of like this motion. It looks like they're dancing very awkwardly and they just kind of slowly rock around. They don't swim nearly as fast because their main motion is up and down in the water column. So they really just want to get, get up and down in the water column, whereas their octopus cousins have to hide until they either want to find food or need to avoid predators. And once the predators are gone, then they can, can come out. All right. Well, that's a pretty good exploration of how octopus eat, move, and hide amongst their environment. What else can we observe and ask questions about on an octopus? Hmm. One of the common questions we get are the range of sizes of octopus. The biggest octopus is the giant Pacific octopus. That's kind of how they got their name. The, I think the largest they've recorded is over 100 pounds. But there's a lot of reports of different sizes. So in general, we say the giant Pacific octopus is probably only going to get to a maximum of 100 pounds, but they average around 40 to 50 pounds at their biggest. Anyways, now the smallest octopus is actually very tiny. Sarah's going to have to look up what, how small they are, but they don't get very big. The smallest octopus. I forgot their name. Because they're so small, they just escape my memory. That's how it works, right? Yeah. Well, there's a big range in sizes of a lot of animals. So the smallest octopus is pretty tiny. So the smallest octopus is called the octopus wolfi, and it's about this big. So that's about right, about the size of a square inch of space. That's a pretty small octopus compared to a 100-pound giant Pacific octopus. The other thing about the giant Pacific octopus, when they stretch their arms out like that, roll, roll wide, they can have a arm span of over 10 to 12 feet. That's pretty big. But then you have this one little, tiny little one-inch octopus. So the range of size is pretty big. Now, the other thing sometimes people ask us about is how are they poisonous or venomous? Have you heard of a poisonous or venomous octopus? Hmm. They are a tropical species that most people might think of. It's called the blue ring octopus. Now, what's the difference between poison and venom, though? Because that's an important part of how this works. Well, poison is you have to eat it, and it's toxic to you. So, like, if you ate a chemical or a food that was not good for you, it can be poisonous. Venom has to be injected into you from a sting or a bite. So, what do you think? Are octopus going to be poisonous or venomous? Well, I don't recommend you lick an octopus because they don't like that. They will, they will slap you. But an octopus is venomous, not, be, not poisonous unless you try to eat the venom that came out, but they will bite things and inject venom. So here's the cool thing. All octopus are venomous, but only certain ones like the blue ringed octopus are extremely venomous and would hurt people really badly. So if you tried to pick up an octopus for funsies and it bit you, not only is it going to hurt because remember their beak is really sharp and pointy and cause a lot of damage. Remember their, their mouth is designed for breaking open shells and tearing food from hard spaces. But they're also venomous, and that's going to hurt really, really bad. Now this octopus right here, well, kind of right here, where is the rest of our octopus? Can you see all the parts of our octopus hiding in this picture? This is a local species called a two-spot octopus. It has rings on its body, but it's not quite like the blue ring octopus. But if you imagine there's a bunch of these all over their body, the octopus was a bright yellow color with blue rings. That would be the blue ring octopus. So this is one that we have here locally. Nowhere near as venomous. Actually, we've had two-spot octopuses at the aquarium before. Now, this is their color when they like to hide. Normally, their color is a little bit lighter 
and they have this blue ring right here. So not all animals with blue rings would be the blue ringed octopus, but that ring is special. Where's the octopus's eye? Now that Tally brought it up, there's another part about camouflage I forgot to tell you about. So there's the eyes, right? Well, if you have these and they look like eyes on an animal, it can fool a predator or a prey item so they don't know who you are or where your face is. There's a lot of animals that have false eye spots somewhere else on their body so that a predator might not know which side's the front and which side's the back and how am I supposed to eat that thing? Take the copper banded butterfly fish, for example. Where's the eye of the butterfly fish? Is it that? Mm, not quite. Could look like an eye though, but their eyes right here. So some animals hide their eyes in stripes and colors so that it's not as easy to find their face and this false eye spot is hanging out back here to confuse them. Well, even as fantastic as an octopus is at hiding, they will use false eye spots in some cases to help hide. Not all octopus have that. Did you see that on Godzilla? No, they're pretty big, so it's not as much about hiding from your predators as it is to hide from your prey and wait for them to get too close, and then they can't escape. Pretty cool. Now, quick review. Where's the head of the octopus? Is it down here? Is it over there? Is it right here? Yes, right here. Their head is only that section in the middle. What was this part back here? What's inside this section? You're right, all of their guts, their gills, their intestines, their stomach. All of those things are back in here called the mantle. And then their arms, or tentacles as we often call them, are right here in the front. Okay, that's pretty good. Let's have Talia pick her next favorite octopus picture or video to show us. I surprised her with this. She, she didn't realize I was going to surprise her. But we're going to have Talia pick the next clip or image of an octopus, and we're going to see if we can make some new observations. We've covered a lot about octopus and their cousins. Let's see if we can find some new things that we can observe together. Well, while Talia is finding that, I'll let you know. We have programming going on all week this week for Aquarium Online Academy. Normally, we only air on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, but because this week's a special week between the holidays, we are airing every day, Monday through Thursday. And then next week, really special, we have a special grouping of online academy classes called our Winter Kids Club. So you can check out our Winter Kids Club activities next week, and we have some at-home activities associated with each class that you can do on your own and share with us if you would like to. Okay, hell yeah. What do we have? Oh, oh. What are we going to watch our octopus friend do, Talia? Stuff and things. Those are my favorite. Where is this octopus going? Um, uh, whoa. What happened? Uh-oh. We forgot an octopus adaptation, didn't we? Yes, we did. What did we see happen when the octopus decided to crawl between the rocks? Now, the octopus can tell that you still know it's there, so it's a little like, get away. Well, let's start the video over. What happens when this octopus decides to crawl in between the rocks? Now, remember, they can squish as small of a space as their mouth is, and there's the cloud coming out. What is that cloud? You're right. It's ink. Not exactly like the ink we use in our pens, but that's kind of an example of what this chemical can do. It's just coloring mixed in with some fluid and some boogers that they can squirt out to hide from predators. So if you're an octopus, how cool is that? If you could be like an ocean ninja, smoke bomb, and then you're gone. But instead of smoke, it's gooey. That's actually a pretty good adaptation. If you could throw a ball of boogers at an, a predator, they might not want to hang out with you too much. I don't recommend it as people because that would take a lot of effort to make that much. But an octopus can squirt out ink, which in some cases can be really sticky. And if it gets on the predator, they're more con concerned about getting that off than trying to eat. So an octopus can hide in the cloud, swim away suddenly with their siphon, 
or scooch farther into the rocks so that they're more protected from a potential predator. Well, that's all the time we had today. Thank you all for watching and hanging out as we learn about the octopus. Now, don't forget, tune in all the rest of this week, Monday through Thursday, we have programs. And all next week, we're going to have special Winter Kids Club activities. Thank you, everybody, and enjoy the rest of your Monday.